Hey, what's going on everyone? It's uh, been a little while since I played some KSB, but with the game receiving its final update some time ago, I thought it would be a great time for me to update to the newest version of the game and also take the chance to clean up my mods folder a bit as well. My goal for this video and possibly series is to keep the mods to a minimum and although I still ended up with around 40 that I consider essential in my game data folder, I still feel it's a lot better than the hundreds I had running previously. Now when I was re-uploading the mods, I knew that I wanted some sort of life support requirement as well as something that would allow me to do colonization so for that the MKS suite seemed to be the most logical choice again. I also wanted reusability to be incorporated for the larger or more expensive assemblies. In the past, I've done 100% full reusable builds, but unfortunately those require a lot of testing and balancing, so for the sake of some time and sanity, I kept the reusability on this project to more of the essential aspects. And as you can see, our main LOX tank for this shuttle is going to be one of the parts we reuse. It's not fitted with any kind of retro rockets. Instead, it will re-enter the atmosphere for an aquatic landing just using parachutes. Anyway, enough of the intro. What we are building today is a small Kerbin station that will orbit around 150,000 meters and work as an outpost for Kerbals to refuel, resupply, and colonize out into space much easier. The first station, along with a simple satellite relay, will be a huge help in getting the ball rolling for colonization. You can see here our first piece of the project is going to be our main sail. Now, to be honest, there really is not much that makes this part special, but I like to imagine this is where most of the station's systems like power supply, food, water, and recycling are handled. But in reality, it's just the top part of the station, so I decided it would be logical to make it the first one launched. Now that we have that dropped off, we are just turning around to head home. I tried shaving some velocity off of our re-entry because we were coming in a little fast for this altitude. With this shuttle, I wanted to make sure that the utility of it was going to be useful. It was important to be able to keep my center of mass consistent, whether the payload was full or completely empty, and then the same obviously applies for the fuel as well. So, with the payload we just launched, this plane could easily take off, fly around and land with that in the cargo bay or not at all. The plane does have a drain valve on the front because the wings are holding fuel so if you were to try to land with more than say 25% fuel remaining uh, the wings will most likely try to rapidly deconstruct. If you notice the nose of the plane tip up there that's because I thought it would be a good idea to empty the fuel and shift the plane's weight while still moving around 700 meters a second. I'm actually pretty lucky the wings did not rip off from that maneuver, but either way we are safe, back on the ground, and ready for our second launch. This is probably the least most exciting part of the build. This will be sort of a hub that really connects the rest of the station together. It has a top and bottom connection, as well as three side ports, which will occupy refueling and farming for our Kerbals while in space. The Ranger Agricultural Module that we will be deploying for our farming is easily one of my favorite assets in the game. It's actually one of the main reasons I can never seem to play a full stock version of the game. Uh, the MKS or USI suite mods by Rover Dude are so well done and with such great looking assets that I have to include them in my gameplay. The extra planning for life support can be slightly hindering at times, but if you plan well, the payoff feels good knowing you were able to keep your Kerbals alive under a somewhat more realistic setting. Now, it's not as intense of a life support system as something like Kerbalism, but the USI life support, in my opinion, is more feature rich because of its integration into the rest of the USI mods. That's just my opinion. I've never used Kerbalism personally, and I'll be honest, it looks like it would be a lot of fun handling the externalities like radiation, but I don't believe it's compatible with all of USI, so unfortunately, I've never tried the mod myself. Anyway, uh, we have our top connected to the midsection here, and you can kind of see the station taking shape. Uh, just going to turn some of the lights and solar panels on to make sure everything is working. 
and then we can fly our little lander back down to the KSC as part of our reusability efforts. I've talked about this in a previous video, but if you want to land back at the KSC like this consistently, you have to take a different approach depending on what type of vehicle you are using. The plane or shuttle, for instance, will glide with the lander here. It's the complete opposite. Uh, once this starts to lose velocity, it's not going to glide, it will uh, drop like a rock. So because of that, you want to decently overshoot your trajectory, as well as re-enter from a slightly higher altitude. These two, in combination with the high thrust to weight ratio using something like the Rhino engine I have here, will allow you to pinpoint your landings much better. The higher altitude allows you to overshoot your landing and not have to deal with heat as much on re-entry. When you do finally have to slow down for heating, it will be much more in line with your descent for your landing. Now we have our third launch here, and this is going to be our horizontal array of fuel tanks and agricultural. This is the most critical launch because it's carrying the station's food, fertilizer, and basically sole means for survival in space. We're rendezvousing, and I was a little worried about this because I didn't test any of the RCS ahead of time, and I'm notorious for forgetting to apply RCS correctly and not noticing until I'm in orbit. This launch was of course nothing different, so you can see here for the first module I'm moving the entire station to dock with the middle unit. I was luckily able to barely grab it here on my first attempt, but you can see how the magnets are doing much of the heavy lifting for me. But overall, connecting the modules went smoother than I thought it might. When I originally designed the station, it was just something I came up with quickly that I thought looked interesting. It was supposed to be three sections and three rocket launches, but then kind of grew larger and eventually I knew deep down I had to make it more interesting by involving a shuttle and then a fourth section and finally enough life support systems to uh, keep at least four Kerbals for an extensive amount of time while living there. Finally getting the last module attached to our station and back down with our lander again for our final rocket launch. I also wanted to point out that these reusable landers are completely stock builds and although they don't look very sexy they are pretty good workhorses without actually using any parts from the reusability mod. Most of the time I'll include the SpaceX style landing legs purely for cosmetics but these landing legs weigh much less and are exactly what was needed. I may mess around with the design of them though and try to come up with something slightly more appealing. This is our final rocket launch. After this, we will be launching the shuttle one more time, which will ferry our Kerbals to their new home for the next year or so while we wait for an open transfer window to Duna. While the last launch was the most critical, this is easily the second most important cargo concerning equipment. This is holding our entire habitat systems for the Kerbals to live and exercise in during their time in orbit. If you have ever played KSB with USI Suite running, you will notice I'm using the inflatable habitats, which are really only meant as a temporary living solution, but they provide such a cheap modifier to our habitat timer, I can't help but use them on most starting builds. You might also notice we have a few recycling units attached radially that will help extend our food supply. Finally, starting to look somewhat like an operable station, we can deploy these small habitat units now, but to deploy our large artificial gravity ring, we need to bring a good amount of material kits up with our Kerbals on the final launch of this initial mission. A lot of the different deployables or machines in the USI mod use machinery parts or material kits to operate or initiate. The material kits themselves are very heavy and can be manufactured if you take the time to set up the proper mining operations as well as the needed processing plants to manufacture them. It can be a pretty involved process to achieve, so until then we are launching the heavy cargo to keep our station functioning for the time being. This Kerbin station is a bare bones setup but really only requires a small amount of machinery and fertilizer to keep operating for an extended amount of time.
As always, the stars of the show are our Kerbals and crew. On their way up to the new home built for them, the station still has open attachment ports for adding future expansion and modules to be docked as needed. Like I said at the start of this video, I haven't played KSP in quite a while, and this was a really fun return. I was lucky enough to not have any Kraken attacks or horrible misplannings that resulted in a failed mission. I decided to keep things as basic as could be while also somewhat challenging enough to still be entertaining. Recently, Kerbal Space Program 2 launched, but I've honestly stayed away from KSP2 for the time being. I own it on Steam, but I suspect like most, I will be waiting for the more substantial updates before I invest energy and time there. For now, the original KSP is still a great experience with endless amounts of mods to tailor your gameplay however you want. It's nowhere near perfect, but the game has evolved so much over the years and will always be an enjoyable experience to boot up and build something new and creative. For this video, I don't even have the game's best visual mods running. The Parallax mod paired with real volumetric clouds is an amazing upgrade that makes even old Kerbin destinations fun to revisit again. If you haven't had a chance to test either of those out, I highly suggest looking into them because they both add an almost needed layer of detail to KSP. Anyway, our last bit of reusability has landed and our crew is about to be coasting into our freshly built station. But before they can dock, we have to empty the shuttle's cargo bay which is carrying our material kits required to get everything up and running. The large gravity ring we have at the bottom of the station extends our hab time here quite a bit, but it will also use nearly all of this cargo container's material kits in order to function. And once that's stocked, we have all of the necessary equipment finally assembled. Now just to dock our ship and offload our crew so we can put them to work. Before that though, I need to make some quick corrections and I will let you watch me struggle as I forget to turn SAS back on while trying to dock here. Alright, good enough. Now let's get one of our engineer Kerbals out on an EVA here so they can hook up some of the station systems to provide everyone with a comfortable living situation. And again, these agricultural modules and so many other assets that are in Rover Dudes mods are amazing and really are what makes builds like these shine more than they should. There's our giant working artificial gravity ring to keep our Kerbals with some bone density and muscle over the next year. You can see a readout of our life support on the station and things are looking good. We have well over the needed supplies and have time to last us for the planned year. Our electric charge will replenish daily thanks to our solar panels and the crew should be able to survive comfortably. And with that, it takes us to the end of this mission and video. I just want to thank everyone for watching. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe and until next time, take care everyone.